All right, we're at the same spot we were last year where Cayuse Creek meets the Fraser River at Lillooet. Water level looks a lot more shallow than it was last year. Let's see where that fresh water comes in and meets the turbid water of the Fraser. And this is the Lillooet Panning Reserve. Looks like lots of fresh gravels down there for everyone. We'll check that out later. Beautiful day here on the Fraser River, just outside Lillooet, or actually inside Lillooet area. Now it's just getting a little bit cooled off. It's a warm day today, about 24 degrees Celsius. And she's just getting a refreshing tummy cooling. So a lot of the rocks here at the Cayuche have a greenish tint, the low grade nephrite jade or mountain jade. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Generally the more translucent and greenish, the actual like jadeite color it means higher purity. But there's a lot of dark green rocks out there. There's where we are camping. Some of these rocks, especially when they're wet, they have a higher degree of translucency. They're getting to be a higher grade of nephrite. Keep looking, see if I can find something worth carving. A little spot on the river, the Cayuche meets the Fraser. It's probably be four or five meters underwater in the spring here. See all this blue water. It's the chocolate milk in the Fraser. Both of these uh, water courses have, have gold in them. So we're just looking around, see if we can find some. A little bit of gold from the first pan. So there's the bridge going into Lillooet. It's a pretty nice little panning reserve here. The campground owner, which is just over this ridge here, he said that there was a guy that just came down here and got a quarter of a gram in a short period of time with a frying pan. So, there is gold out here. I haven't found much yet, just a couple of traces. It's the season, there'd be more people out here though. This is prime time. This is a Janet working hard, panning away. Such a hard working family. Got a doodad castle here. Some nice pieces of semi translucent FH people picked out. Probably some of the nicest pieces I've seen on out here. Not taken from the sculpture though. This, of course, will get knocked down in the spring in the floods, but. Until then, here's the second doodad fortress. Some more nice pieces. Semi translucent nephrite jade, more of the teal color there, looks pretty nice. Some other neat looking rocks, too. I might have to do this one day. Just go to a spot, pick out a bunch of neat rocks, and then turn it into a castle sculpture. It's the sacred spot. Guess that one's no good.
those two are working away down there. And that's kind of the edge of the padding reserve there just before the bridge. It goes all the way down here. Over here up to Cayuse Creek. Goes down from the mountains there. And it goes back a fair ways along Cayuse. And I did a bunch of tests all kind of around here. Very, very small amounts though. Surprising since it's a famous gold rush spot. Normally there's little margins of flower gold around the edge. But we kind of got like nothing in this little bit here and down there and around the edge along there too. We got like 20, 30, 40 specks up back up behind those trees. But a little bit harder than some of the other reserves to get on the gold surprisingly despite the stories. Our intrepid hero, pen in the gold. What a beautiful day. Mold eagles. Can't see them in the viewfinder. Bunch of deer. Now get the fearless doggy. Then we went out to Lytton, which was partially destroyed earlier in the summer of 2021. The drive through the Fraser River Valley is pretty exciting and has a lot of unique terrain and big drop-offs. It is also fairly dangerous. In many places, if you went off the road, you'd probably die. Church did good, the Anglican. This is the downtown part. It's got little street lights on the west stairs. Yeah. Disappeared the town. Crosswalk signs still there, street lights, a little mountain. So all these little stores, this was the downtown, all the merchants. Still, if there's anything to, to say. 
say, eh? Digging through the rubble. I'm surprised they haven't salvaged it. It takes a long time. Well, it's been like months already. That's a grocery store. And his trailer behind didn't burn. See that? The house. Yeah. Bus. That's a place. That's so much. That's a little trailer. Yeah. Trucks and everything down there. First little test hole, Let's see how we do. First pen, you can actually see some fairly nice big pieces of gold glittering. These are some of the biggest pieces of gold I've ever found in my first pen. Just walk down here, first little spot. Just up here, kind of near the river, but not too close. Look at that. Yeehaw. And if you swirl this around, there's a bunch of little fine gold in there, too. Pretty cool. Actually, whoa. Some very nice little chunky flakes. Not used to this in flower gold country. So if you look closely here, compared to most of the gold we get on this channel, this is very chunky and has a lot of character. I can feel them with my finger if I poke them. And if you look closely here too, you can see that there's actually a lot less black sand. Like typically on the cottonwood or quenelle, or, uh, some of the lower banks in the Fraser that have lots of black sand. And flower gold, it's just pure black sand and flower gold. Here, you get very little black sand, some bigger particles and then larger pieces of gold. So a lot easier to process by any conventional system. You don't need VDR mats for a big conk and mini nuggets and bigger flakes like that. Second test. Not less gold than the first. More flower gold and a little bit more black sand. There's another pen. Decent size, but not too many. And a pretty big, nice flake there. Some smaller ones. This wasn't really light gravel though, so it's surprising. Also not very much blade, blade, uh, black sand. Lots of light blonde sands so. though. Pretty interesting, high mobility gold flake. A lot of the public panning reserves in British Columbia have decent gold. So if you've never been gold panning before, there are plenty of spots to try your luck and see how a little glint of gold makes you feel deep inside. As always, please remember to reclaim all of your holes so that these beautiful areas can be preserved for others to enjoy. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode of New Canadian Gold Rush.